awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Hernandez. Um, well, hello, guys. Uh, like Mr. Hernandez said, I am Luis Reyes. I'm the senior Roman counselor for Texas Wesleyan. And we're going to go through the College 101. And it's a, it's a, a presentation for you to, if you're a senior, to hopefully start thinking a little different of what you are doing or hopefully start to encourage you to um, maybe you miss something or hopefully you are on or we are really assuring that you're in the right track. Uh, if you are a lower classman, then maybe this is a good idea for you to start thinking of what you need to be considering whenever searching for college. Uh, I tell students that college is um, like a glove. It has to fit in right to your fit, to your size. And you have to think of, you know, what are your needs? Uh, what do you want? Um, how do you learn? How do you process information? So you, that all goes into that fit. You know, what's the right fit for you? Um, and you have to ask those questions whenever you're searching for the college uh, of your choice. So we're going to go through the presentation. And like um, Deshanda said, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. More than happy to answer those uh, for you. So we're going to be covering on finding the right college for you, how to prepare to apply for the right college. And then once you have already um, applied, you know, how are you going to pay for for this university? So what do you want in a college? Um, the factors to consider is going to be location. You want to know where you're going to be applying. Are you going to be staying close, far? What kind of institution are you applying to? Public, private, technical? Uh, two-year two community college, you know, where are you wanting to go? The size, do you want to go to a big university, a small university? Um, do you want to go to a uh, university that is affiliated to a specific religion? Uh, majors, do you want to uh, go to a university that is focused on research? Do you want to go to a university that is focused on more in the liberal arts? Uh, campus life, do you want to go to uh, a uh, university that is heavily involved within a specific project or a specific organization. Um, so there's a lot of things that you want to look into whenever you're selecting or starting to search for the right college for you. So there's other things that we're going to go through. The first one, like I said, it was location. Um, do you want to go to a uh, far away from the city or do you want to go stay in the city? Uh, each one has their own benefits. Each one has their own um, factors that you will determine um, and how you determine this is by visiting each university. You have to visit campus. You have to visit and try it out for yourself. I tell students that you are uh, right now you are in a buying mode. You're buying your shop, not buying shopping. Sorry, so you're shopping. You're in a shopping mode, so you're shopping for your education. So whenever you buy a product, you actually test it out. You don't just buy the first random thing that you uh, see. You have to actually go buy and try it out for yourself. If you're buying shoes, you have to try them out. <laughs> if you're buying a, a shirt, you have to just try it out and see how it looks. Does it feel good? Is it uh, does it make you look good? Um, so the same thing for your education. Why should why why are you not you know looking and visiting different universities? So if you're a senior, please make sure that you take the opportunity to go visit. There are virtual options. Many universities have opted for a virtual campus tour. So go to their website and, some, uh, and register for one of those. Or if they're doing face to face, many need to do face to face. Uh, Westland is doing both. So you have the option to actually do a, a virtual from your house or you actually can go to campus and safely do those. So please make sure that you visit um, just here in the DFW. We have many different options. Um, we have 11 different universities that you can select just here in the DFW uh, and those are going to be within the, the suburban um, like options within the city where they give you options for uh, internships and network and all of that stuff. And what do you want? You want a public university or you want a private university? Um, these are some of the major differences. Um, obviously, there are uh, also similarities in both. Uh, if you're wanting to go to a public university, you're going to be looking into a larger class size, wider choice of majors. So there's going to be more options for you to select. If you're looking into a private institution, typically it's going to be small. Um, it's going to be more of the liberal arts program. They're going to be highly, highly specialized under technical majors. And because of the small class size, you're going to have a better access to professors. Not saying that you won't have that within the 
a larger university is going to be just a little harder for you to get their attention. Um, and like I kept, as like I said before, just here at the DFW, we have 11 different options in universities, ranging from big public institutions to small private liberal arts universities. Like uh, UNT is a big public university. We have UTD, University of Texas in Dallas, which is a mid-size uh, public. And then we have small um, private universities like Texas Wesleyan, or we have TCU, which is a mid-size uh, private university. So you have a lot of options uh, to consider. Each university offers something unique. Uh, each university has something different from each other, um, but it's something that you have to take in consideration of what are you looking for? What's that fit or the right fit for um, your search? The size, like I mentioned before, um, I went to a big public. I went to UNT. I graduated from UNT, and this is what my classroom looked like. Um, this is similar to my genetics class. I was a bio major, so I took genetics. So this is what I was um, my daily my my daily environment. Um, and then this is a, a picture of Texas Wesleyan. This is a regular class size uh, for Wesleyan. Very small, very one on one. Um, so you have to determine, you know, how do you learn? How do you process information? Or how do you study for a test? Uh, are you ready to do all of that stuff? Um, we are human, so we adapt to each environment. You have the ability to uh, thrive in a bigger classroom and you have the, the, the potential to thrive in a smaller classroom. Obviously, it's going to it's going to all depend on, you know, the effort that you give it. Uh, but you are able to survive in both. There are resources in both uh, scenarios that you should be able to survive in both of those settings. But again, it goes down to you. You know, what is it that you are more comfortable with? Um, and what is it that you are, do you, do you see yourself surviving easier in a bigger classroom setting or on a smaller classroom setting? Um, so th those are your options. You know, what are you looking for? What's the size of the campus that you want to go into? Within demographics and characteristics, if you're looking into like a specific religion that you want to be going to um, just here in the, in the DFW, I mean, we have Texas Wesleyan, which is uh, Methodist. We have TCU that is uh, within the Christian. We have Dallas University, which is within the Catholic. So there's different options just here in the DFW, like I said. Um, so imagine if the entire state. So there's a lot of options there. So if you're looking for something in particular. I am pretty sure you're going to find one. Um, if you're looking for a single or co-ed, again, you will be able to find um, those. Uh, if you're uh, wanting to go with an ethnic affiliation, um, so if you go with um, Hispan uh, like a historic black college, like it's, uh, those are options as well. So is it um, going back to what are you looking? <laughs> what do you want within uh, those options? You have plenty to choose from, and it goes down to what are you more comfortable with, and it goes to visiting those universities and trying those out for yourself to see if you uh, if it fits into whatever your your needs. Um, academics, I think it's a major important uh, factor that you guys need to consider. What is the academics uh, that the university is offering within the choices of? Uh, degrees, you know, if you're interested in mass communications, or if you're interested in engineering, if you're interested in um, law school at your final goal. So what is the options that your uh, the university is going to offer you while you're getting your degree? What kind of internship positions are they going to be offering you? What kind of uh, network opportunities professors are going to help you? You know, what kind of career um, choices or uh, job fairs they're going to have within the university. Are you wanting to go to a university that is going to be uh, focusing on research itself and or do you want to go to a university that is mostly teaching? Um, so there's a lot of options. Make sure that you select a university that offers maybe five, um, have five things in mind that you are wanting or interested in studying uh, because you might change your mind. You might be interested right now in biology, but you take two classes and you're like, you know what? This is not something that I want. I want to do business. So you switch to business or if you are in engineering or if you are in architecture, you start as an engineer major and you decide, you know what? I really don't want to do this. I want to switch to business. So make sure that you have um, 
you choose a university that is going to have multiple options for you to choose from that each that university is going to offer you a plan or a support system for you to be successful um, after you graduate, uh, meaning that they're going to offer you internship positions or uh, research positions, um, make sure that they offer you conferences, make sure that you guys that the university has a good plan for you to get a job. Um, so for Wesleyan, for example, we have a plan for students to be involved in internships. Uh, no matter what the degree that you are in, you have to get an internship, meaning that you have to do your networking or outreach with different companies in the DFW for you to have already a connection made. By the time you graduate, you already know somebody within the field of your um, interests, and it will be easier for you to get a job. So those are the things that you guys need to be asking. Um, what kind of scholarships do they offer within the academics? Uh, maybe you're interested in performing arts. Um, are they offering any uh, uh, scholarships for music majors? Are they offering any scholarships for education majors? So those are things that also that could be uh, uh, a thing for you to consider. And then campus life, you know, campus life is where um, you make a lot of memories, um, your memories that will last forever and that, the, that you enjoyed college um, is going to be through the activities that you guys are part of. So make sure that you guys are involved, um, learn about the different organizations that each university has, the traditions that they have, um, the activities that they offer for their students. If you're interested in sports, obviously make sure that they have the sports, they learn about their athletic programs, if they offer in scholarships, divisions, um, if you're able to go to the games for free, you know, uh, tailgating, anything <laughs> that you are uh, interested in learning about the university um, and campus life, because this is where you, like I said, is where you're going to be making those memories that are going to last forever. So make sure that you guys are active, make sure that you guys are part of something because you don't want to go to college and not be part of something. I think that's the best option, being part of an organization, being part of uh, something that you um, connect to the university. And it's going to help you actually um, have more school spirit if you're more involved and it's going to help you keep up with your grades because you have more school pride. So make sure that you guys are active and make sure that you guys learn about the different organizations that each university has. Each one is going to have something unique. Each one is going to have something special. And as you guys are um, being part of that university, you, you get to learn more. Um, but make sure that if you're looking for something in particular, uh, if, for example, like if you want to be part of a sorority or fraternity, then know if the university offers those type of options. Um, so make sure that you guys are active. All right, so those are things that you guys would be looking for um, in your search uh, to determine what's that right fit for you. Um, but if you are, let's say, a lower classmen, um, then these are some of the things that you would be wanting to be doing right now as a high school student to be ready to apply for um, college. So the number one factor right now is going to be, um, well, prior to the pandemic, pandemic, it was the SAT, ACT. Very important um, thing for you guys to be aware of, for you guys to uh, test for these SAT, ACT. Uh, test and for you guys to get competitive scores, make sure that you guys retest multiple times. Right now for fall of 21, um, if you're a senior, many universities have waived the SAT, ACT. They have went and made themselves test optional, um, where they're waiving the SAT, ACT score to be admitted to the university, or they might be waiving the SAT, ACT to be given or award scholarships, uh, merit-based scholarships. So, Make sure that you guys ask or do your research on the university that you're applying to to see what that means. For Texas Wesleyan, uh, we have gone test optional, meaning that we are not considering your SAT, ACT for admissions or for scholarships. We are focusing only um, on your GPA. So that's the only thing that we're going to be paying attention to for your admissions and for your scholarships. So please make sure that you guys pay attention. Like I said, lower classmen, this is something that you will be some uh, needing to take uh, and for you guys to be aware of. And obviously uh, get involved. Um, as a high school student, I strongly recommend for you guys to be part of an organization 
for you guys to play a sport, for, for you guys to volunteer, for you guys to try maybe get a job. Um, this is going to help you land those scholarships that you um, we all need. This is going to help you be more diverse. It's going to help you be uh, more of a well-rounded student because whenever you're applying for the universities, they're going to want to know that you were active, that you were part of something else besides academics. Uh, because we know that you can survive in a high school or your academic, <coughs> excuse me, world. Um, so we want to know that you can actually manage your time by playing a sport or that you have volunteer hours that are going to help you land the scholarships that you need. Um, so being active in high school, being uh, involved is going to tremendously help um, in that search for um, earning you extra money in scholarships and for you earning you a spot in that university or college that you are uh, wanting to do. So if you're a lower class man, please make sure that you're part of something, be part of our club organization. You don't have to be president of every single club and organization in your high school. It's just being a part of one or two, or if you can, then you have to get a job. That's OK as well. Um, we, uh, we completely understand, but just make sure that you're active in something else. And I'm pretty sure you have heard this a thousand times, but stay in class, you know, keep your grades up. Uh, as a, if you're like a sophomore and you're taking a reading or English class and you're not really wanting to do your work and you're not really being participant and your grades kind of uh, get affected and you're saying, eh, you know, it's OK, it's it's uh, my English two class is not going to be anything, but if you're a senior, you know that that's not true, <laughs> that each class, each grade makes a difference, uh, takes into consideration for your overall GPA. Whenever you're applying for a high school, uh, a college, they're going to be looking for that overall GPA. We evaluate every um, class that you took, every grade that you received. Um, so they look into that F that you made or that D that you made in your freshman year, or they're going to be looking at the grades that you receive whenever you were a senior, what kind of classes you took. So uh, what kind of classes you took as a junior, were you challenging yourself where you were just easing off um, in your uh, high school? So make sure that you are competitive, make sure that you take a challenge, make sure you take a dual credit class. I know that Eagle Mountain ISD has the opportunity for you guys to take dual credit with TCC, so make sure that you guys take advantage of that uh, because this gives you a little uh, taste of what college is going to be um, and it gives you an idea of study habits, uh, preparing yourself for tests and it gives you an idea of how you're going to be able to survive once you are fully engaged and fully uh, a college student 100 percent and just partial so make sure that you are competitive make sure that you guys take those ap uh, classes make sure you if you take the ap class make sure you take the test uh, and make sure that you send those scores to the universities to earn you that um that that credit for dual credit if you're taking classes at tcc 100 like 99.9 percent .9 of those classes will transfer in to your uh universities within the fw since we have um pathways created within those uh, community colleges all right so you have already um you know, you've already made a decision of where you want to go. You have an idea of what kind of college you want to apply to. You have an idea of what majors are you looking for. Um, you have taken your SAT or maybe you know that you don't have to take SAT this year and you are basically ready to start applying for different universities. Um, make sure that you guys understand deadlines. Uh, make sure that before deadlines come, that you are organized, that you have created maybe a profile for each of the universities that you are trying to apply to. Each university has their own deadlines. The deadlines could be for application or it could be for scholarships. So understand when you have to submit an application for that university or when you have to submit an application for their scholarship for the same university. So. Deadlines is something that you want to be aware of and you don't want to miss. You don't want to be that student that misses a deadline and you're asking for an extension because that does not look good on you. If you miss a deadline for Texas Wesleyan, that tells me that you're not truly interested, that you were not truly in uh, aware of when you needed to submit your stuff and you're not prepared. So it just um, be that kid. 
So organization is going to be something key. Um, I know that for many universities, uh, at least for the state of Texas, you have the Apply Texas that you can apply to multiple different universities through that application uh, and that you are able to uh, submit your application at once to many different universities. So make sure that you guys are on top of that. Uh, if you need to submit a different application, some universities might have um, their own private um, application and they might charge you uh, fees, so make sure you're aware of fees as well uh, and what kind of requirements each university is asking before you submit your application. So not just apply randomly to any university, understand what are the, the admissions requirements for each institution, <coughs> excuse me, for each institution that you are applying to and that you understand the deadlines for what each university is asking. So going back to deadlines, um, Universities might have different things, so it could be early decision deadlines. It could be early action priority deadline, or it could be just a regular application deadline. Early decision are binding, meaning that you have to complete a binding agreement and you're going to be saying or in that agreement you're saying or stating that if you were to be accepted to that institution, that you are going to be dropping everything else that you being, are being offered and you're going to be committed to uh, attending that institution if you are accepted. Usually these are going to be for um, very selective uh, universities um, and they're going to be binding, meaning that you're going to be saying, yes, I want to attend this university. I'm 100% committed. We have early action priority deadlines that are non-binding. Um, this gives you the opportunity to keep shopping. Um, so you're shopping around for different universities whenever you're applying as well. So this uh, early action on binding means that you have the flexibility to apply to multiple universities without the commitment of saying, yes, I am um, saying that I will attend your university. And then you have regular application deadlines that are maybe rolling admissions. That means that you can apply up to the first day of class. So application process is very important. You have to be organized and you have to be aware of what deadlines mean. You have to be aware of what are the requirements that each university is asking for, and you have to be aware of when you have to be turning these things um, to that uh, university and how you're going to be submitting those uh, paperwork, uh, resumes, letters of recommendation. All of that goes within deadlines. So please make sure that you guys are aware of um, and you are organized because you can easily miss a deadline and you can easily confuse a deadline from different universities because they're all similar. They all have the same range or the same time that are things due. It could be one deadline, let's say January 15, could be a deadline for five different universities. So being organized and being aware of your, your timeline is going to be very, very important. So please make sure you don't miss any deadlines. And as you guys are seniors, as you guys are aware, you have to write a lot of essays. Um, if you're a lower classman, <coughs> excuse me, if you're a lower classman, understand that you will have to write, write a lot of essays as a senior. Um, you're going to be writing a lot of essays for scholarships. Um, you're going to be writing essays for admissions purposes. Uh, so please be aware, be aware and start early on in writing essays because all of the application process is time consuming. It's going to take you time. So if you're a junior, right now you have plenty of time. You have plenty of time to do this um, and you should be getting ready and setting up your, your you know, profiles for each of the university. If you're a senior and you haven't done any of this, don't freak out. It's OK. You still have time, even though you're running out of time. <laughs> so what it means is that you still have time to submit applications um, and that you still have time to do everything that you need to be doing, but you have to put more effort in trying to get it um, ahead, like out of the uh, out of the way and for you to communicate with your counselors and meet with your counselors and be active with your counselors to submit all of your applications. Going back to the essays within time, there's a lot of things that go into writing that essay. There's a lot of tips that you guys can take from from this or from your teachers. You know, there you have a lot of resources as well, but um, some of the things that I like the last 
three, I think that's going to be like my my number one things, you know, write multiple drafts, make sure that somebody ed edits your, your work, make somebody that reads your work um, and make sure that you address it to the right college. Um, those are common things that I see and many students just write it the first time and then they just send it and like, you know what, <laughs> this is this is crazy. Why would you just write one draft and just send it in? Make sure that you have people read it, make sure that you are addressing the prompt, make sure that you guys are sticking to the prompt. If they um, say that it's only 200 words, then stick to the 200 words and don't send 300 words, you know. So be aware of the, the specifics that they're asking for in um, the essays. And like I said, it's time consuming, so make sure that you guys have plenty of time and you're not waiting for the last minute to write your essay and send your essay in at the end, you don't want, you know, uh, sloppy work. You want to have something that is solid and that's something that talks about you. Um, this is your opportunity to shine. This is your opportunity for you, us to learn uh, about who you are, where you're coming from, your struggles, because we are able to see your academics, meaning we can see your transcripts and that tells us somewhat of who you are. But within the essay is your opportunity to actually the, uh, be able to separate from the crowd, separate from from the rest and tell us really uh, where you come from. And then FAFSA, FAFSA is something that you guys need to fill out and I'm 100% uh, this is, has to be already engraved in your brain. October 1st is something that already happened and I'm pretty sure you guys had workshops on submitting your FAFSA. So please make sure that you send your FAFSA as soon as you can complete it. Um, parents, make sure that you guys um, do this as well um, and send information to your students for them to ah, <coughs> excuse me for them to have the best opportunity in receiving money. Um, if you have already completed the FAFSA, maybe for your older son or older daughter, and you know that you didn't receive any aid, um, still submit it. Um, many universities offer extra help to students that don't have the federal uh, assistance. So for example, Texas Wesleyan, if you complete the FAFSA and you're not receiving any federal aid, you still qualify for uh, institutional aid. Um, and the only requirement is for you to complete the FAFSA. So make sure that you fill out the FAFSA, no matter if you are gonna be receiving any federal aid, because this opens up for you to receive uh, grants, work study. Uh, whenever you fill out the FAFSA, you have the opportunity to select work study. Make sure that you guys always select work study um, for you guys to receive extra money for you to pay for college. And if you don't qualify for the FAFSA, if you qualify for the TASFA, which is a, the state uh, funds, make sure you do it. Um, Texas Wesleyan accepts the TASFA, but be aware that it's first come, first serve, not for just the FAF, uh, TASFA, but for the FAFSA as well. So please make sure you complete those as soon as you can, um, and hopefully you have already done so. And then be aware of your resources. Um, high school students, you know that you have a lot of resources within your uh, counselors, within your advisors. You have a college readiness uh, counselor that is specifically um, helping you uh, in applying for colleges. You have teachers that have gone to college. You have us admissions counselors that can help you. You have parents, um, alumni. You have a lot of uh, different options that are going to provide a guiding hand. But you have to be able to tell us what are your struggles? What are your questions? Because we don't read minds. We don't uh, we don't that power hasn't been given to the humanity yet. Um, so you have to be able to say, hey, I have a question about this university. I have a question about this deadline. Uh, what are they asking here? Um, and the more you use your resources, the better, because they're going to be helping you be su successful. And not just in high school, you have to be able to learn how to use your resources in college because you have a lot of resources in the university as well. Um, make sure that you guys go talk to your advisors, make sure you talk to your professors uh, and make sure that you guys keep uh, or are aware of the different resources that you have in order for you to succeed in your high school and in college. So please make sure that you use them. So now you have already determined pretty much all of your options. You know um, where you're going to college, what major you're going to be selecting. Um, you have already uh, completed your essay. You have asked for letters of recommendation and you have your resume ready and you have already made a decision. So hopefully, you know, you're ready to apply and 
now you're ready to pay for college. So hopefully you know how you're going to be paying for college. <laughs> tuition is very important and you have to be aware of tuition whenever you're looking into that university. You have to be able to know the difference between sticker price and um, what is the actual cost of um, the the cost of attendance? So uh, whenever you're, um, I mentioned this tuition and um, total, total cost of attendance, like they're different. Um, sticker price is going to be something that an overall price for the institution um, and the actual cost of attendance is going to be after any aid has been applied and has been deducted from that total cost. So. Be aware of that um, whenever you are applying for the FAFSA it's going to give you the opportunity to receive federal uh, loans and for to be able to qualify for any loans. Um, so please be aware of that. Don't be afraid of uh, obtaining any loans. Uh, don't be scared of obtaining any loans and don't make it a the um, a thing that that pushes you away from going to college. Um, if you have to take a loan, that is OK. You're not going to be the first student or the last student that takes a loan. We all had to at some point get a loan to complete our degree. And the best thing for or my best recommendation is for you guys to be uh, educated on the type of loans that you guys are getting. And you can get that education on our website um, for you can read that on our uh, FAFSA.gov uh, or you can go to the each of the universities that you guys are applying. They all have a financial aid office that can help you and they help you guide you in understanding what kind of loans are you eligible for and what does it mean whenever you are applying for a federal loan versus a private loan whenever you're applying for a subsidized or unsubsidized it all has to do within interest rates when do they stop accumulating when do they stop accumulating when do you have to pay them what's the max that you can take what's the lowest you can take how much can you take all of that information is going to be given through your FAFSA, I mean, financial aid counselors um, it, at each university. So don't be afraid to reach out to us. We're going to be actually, Wesley is going to be offering some workshops uh, within um, uh, financial aid. So be aware of those and know that there's help. Be uh, smart on what loans you take and don't be scared of taking any loans because it's something that you might be able to do and it's going to be able to help you uh, pay for your for your school. And um, I keep telling students that this is an investment that you're making uh, in your future and your education um, within salary wise compared like if you just graduated from high school, you're looking around 37,000 to compare it to 61,000 for those who actually graduate from college. That's the difference of 24,000 that that's a big difference. So please make sure that you guys take the time to invest in your future, in your education. And this is not something that, you know, like the investment that you're making is a, a lifelong investment. It's not something that you, you know, like you're buying a house and later on you sell it or a car, you know, who loses value. Your education actually just retains the value. You keep using that and actually increases its value over the life of, of, of you. Um, and you're able to use it not just now, but like like 10 years from now, five years from now. Um, so please make sure that you are investing in that you are knowing that you're investing in your future. So that's pretty much it. My name is Luis Reyes. I am one of the uh, enrollment counselors at Texas Wesleyan. That's my information. That's my phone number, my email. If you have any questions, please make sure you can um, send them to me by email or you can drop them down right now in the chat. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that this um, helps you uh, start thinking of what are your options. If you are a senior, hopefully makes you think of what's that right fit for me? You know, what is it that I am looking for? Am I ready? Hopefully you are. Don't doubt yourself. You can do this um, and know that you have resources. You have a lot of help that you, that you have available that you can just ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I was a, like uh, Mr. Hernandez said, I'm a first gen student. Um, I came from Mexico um, and I understand the, the struggle of applying to university without really knowing what you're applying to. So it, it can be scary. It can be a little overwhelming, but know that there's a lot of help and there's a lot of people willing to help you. It's a matter of you actually saying, hey, I need help in doing this. So hope that you had a great time. I hope that you guys 
um, enjoy the presentation and thank you so much. Great information. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording now. I just.